Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, welcome. Right, welcome to another beautiful live training. Um, welcome to another amazing training experience on Between the Reps. Your journey to a healthier, happier, and more fulfilling life starts right here. Each week on Between the Reps, you will hear insights, tips, and strategies from me all about mindset, confidence, fitness, nutrition, productivity, business, and of course, balancing out this crazy thing called life. Now, Between the Reps is your weekly dose of motivation, inspiration, and real no BS talk to help you go from blah to badass. My name is Chris Atkins, and I'm the CEO and founder of 365 Daily Hustle. My coaching company is a global health, lifestyle, and mindset coaching company. And I am the number one mindset and health coach helping busy CEOs, coaches, and lady bosses boss up their bodies, mindset, and of course, their bank accounts. I help these purpose-driven women 10X their habits, routines, and mindsets so that they can boss up, show up, and thrive in all areas of life. Now today I'm going to talk about how to ditch the diet lifestyle and embrace a sustainable nutritional method instead. But a quick story for those of you who don't know me or my background, um, 12 years ago I was in a pretty dark place. Okay? I was the exact opposite of the woman that you see here today. In fact, 12 years ago, I smoked two pack of cig cigarettes. I was at the heaviest I had ever been. I was feeling very, very depressed on tons of antidepressants. Wasn't sleeping. Wasn't, there was no routine or any structure to my life. But thank God, I hit a rock bottom moment. So me and my family, we were stationed in Germany. In fact, we were in Spangalem, Germany. And we lived in a small little village outside of the Air Force Base. It was called Speicher. And I, of course, was running super late to a doctor's appointment. My husband was deployed. I was overwhelmed. I was exhausted. I was just trying to get my shit together and get out the door, right, so that I could show up somewhat on time. I already knew I was going to have to, like, speed down the Autobahn and, like, get, get to the, the, the appointment, right? So I finally show up, I'm like huffing and puffing because I'm so completely out of shape. And you know, I set my daughter on the ground and I'm like, oh my God, I made it, right? I made it. So the doctor calls me back and she begins to, you know, talk to me all about some stuff. And 10 minutes later, she got real with me. In fact, she got so incredibly real with me that at first I got pissed that she got so real with me. And then, um, turns out two weeks later, I actually went back and thanked her. So there I am sitting in the doctor's office and I got some hard to hear truth. The doctor looked at me square in the eye and she said, Carissa, if you don't change your lifestyle habits today, I guarantee you probably won't be around in 10 years. Y'all, she gave me a 10 year death sentence. That's a hard pill to swallow. So at first I was pissed, I was angry, I was like, how dare this woman like call me, like, like tell me that I'm not going to live past 10 more years if I keep up the life that I have. But thank God she did. Right? She began to say, she said, Carissa, you're five foot tall, you're 213 pounds, and if you don't change, that little girl, you might not be around for her. And she pointed to my daughter who was playing. So I, of course, I was so mad. <laughs> I was like fighting the tears because nobody likes to be called out. She said, you know, she used the O word on me, ladies. She used the O word, which was obese. I never considered myself to be obese at all. So I quickly grabbed my daughter. I'm like fighting these tears back. I get out of the office. I get in the car. I put my daughter in the car seat and I start bawling. I start bawling. I couldn't wait to get home just so that I could smoke another cigarette and open another bottle of wine. So it was about 11 a.m. I put my daughter inside, and I, of course, once I got home, I went out and gotten, you know, lit cigarette after cigarette, poured a big old hefty glass of wine, and I started crying to myself. I sat there on the front porch, and I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck, right? I was so upset. 
But it wasn't until the very next day that I actually had the aha moment that sparked something so deep, incredibly, like so deep inside me that allowed me to push past all the fears, the doubts, the worry, the shame, the guilt, etc., and actually change my life. So the next day I was sitting on the couch and um, I looked over at a picture of my mom, right? It was an end table. Uh, my mom was my best friend. Prior to Germany, she was like my business partner. We did work together. Like she was my best friend. She was my mom. I would put her on such a high pedestal, right? Single mom, work, raising four kids, owning her own business, doing life the best way she knows how. And then I looked over at a picture of her. And for the first time, ladies, I didn't see my mom like that. I saw all of her cancer. I saw diabetes. I saw all the stress. I saw all the, the overwhelm and the anxiety. And the worst part is that I saw myself. I saw myself 10 years later, like that doctor said, fighting for her life. That was the moment that I said, Fuck this, I'm doing something more, right? That was the moment I said, Carissa, you're gonna boss up. You're gonna start to get healthy and you are gonna start stop making excuses. You're gonna stop blaming people for your life and you're gonna start taking responsibility. 12 years later, here I am, right? Not just living my best life, but coaching women all across the world on how they too can get healthy Increase, like get get physically, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, and then in return, that allows us entrepreneurs, right? When we feel so freaking confident, we feel healthy, we feel energized. Then it helps grow our businesses and, of course, our bank accounts. So now you know a little bit more about me, and I just want to talk to you today about how you can ditch the diet lifestyle and embrace a sustainable nutritional method. Okay, so this method is called intuitive eating. Now trust me, I've tried all the bullshit diets, all the quick fixes, the pills, the shakes, the bars, all that jazz, but nothing seemed to work long term. I would get short success, right? I would hop on a new diet. I would hate hate the diet first off because I was dep I was deprived. I felt starving. I went on a diet, ladies, that um, it required. I got six saltine cal uh, saltine crackers with a packet of tuna three times a day. Gross, right? Gross. But I tried everything: cabbage soup diet. I tried. They didn't have all these cool apps like they have now, but at the end of the day, they're all the same. They're all quick fixes. Okay, so I would try these things. I would hop on these diets. I would lose a little bit of weight, and then it would, and then it would go back to, to like, oh, this is, isn't sustainable. So this was all before I had my rock bottom moment. Once I had my rock bottom moment, I learned a new way of eating. Because I knew all the diets and those quick fixes and the shitty bars, A, they were expensive, and B, they didn't work, and they did not work with the lifestyle that I wanted to have. So today I want to talk to you about how you need to ditch the diet lifestyle and embrace a new way of, of, of eating, right? A new way of nutrition. So today I'm going to talk about what is intuitive eating, how is it different, and how you can start to embrace this more sustainable method, okay? So really what intuitive eating is, it's a non-dieting approach to changing your eating habits. Intuitive eating is all about trusting your body to make food choices that feel good for you without judgment and without influence of diet culture. I was just on a podcast like three weeks ago and she started asking me all these things and these questions around nutrition and why, you know, like why women fall into the traps of these diets. And ladies, I'm going to just say it's not your fault that you, you jump from diet to diet, right? The health and fitness and wellness industry, the industry as a whole is over $55 billion industry. That's a lot of freaking money that's marketing to you right? Marketing that says that you need this diet in order to boss up your body. Look what this celebrity just did to lose 30 pounds. Like, look at the new shakes and bars. Oh, this new program. Oh, this new program, right? That's thousands of dollars that are being spent on playing on your emotions. 
I cannot stand fitness, health, and wellness culture these days. Everywhere I look, there's a magazine that says, you know, forget this and do this. Less calories, more cardio, right? It drives me freaking bonkers. Because women then come to me thinking that they've tried everything and they, they feel like they're hopeless, right? They feel like nothing works for their body. And instead, I get them to start thinking about their body differently, right? So intuitive eating is a non-dieting approach, okay? And it's changing your eating habits. I am the queen of habit change. And that is like almost the number one thing that women come to me to work for. They need to create healthier habits around nutrition, healthier relationships towards food because they view food as bad. They have forgotten how to trust their bodies and make food choices that feel good within themselves. We're all born with the ability to know what to eat and when to stop eating. And also, we're born to know what's, what's pleasurable and what's satisfying to our bodies, our minds, and our souls. However, most of us start to become more disconnected and less trusting of our own internal wisdom with the influence of our family, our friends, our media, and of course, diet culture. Intuitive eating is a safe and healthy approach to nutrition. So the next question I tend to get from women on, on the calls that I hop up with is like, well, how is it different? Because it sounds like a diet. And I'm like, it's actually exact opposite, right? So intuitive eating, or at least the, my method of intuitive eating, it's sustainable. It's not all or nothing. Intuitive eating allows us to eat the foods that we enjoy without feeling restricted and starving. This personal method is how I've lost close to 100 pounds of body fat. 100 pounds of fat. Like I'm telling you, I've tried all the diets and then thank God I hit that rock bottom moment, right? And I realized that I had to create a new way of living. I had to create a new way of eating. This was before like Facebook, like this, this is in MySpace days, you guys. I didn't have the resources that we have today. Sustainable nutrition allows me to eat the tacos on Tuesday, eat a beautiful pizza, eat my gummy bears, have a, a glass of wine or two a night, and I don't feel guilty, I don't feel shameful, and I don't feel like I've been bad. That's garbage. Food is not bad. Okay, what's good for me is maybe not great for you. What's great for you is definitely not good for me. Everybody is different. The approach, when I help women lose the weight and get into the best shape of their life, the approach is different for every single one of them. When I'm writing custom meal plans, not a single one of them is, is the same. When I'm writing fitness plans, not a plan is the same. When I'm helping a woman boss up her way of thinking, guess what? Her limiting beliefs are not the same as everybody else's. They tend to be all like a, a worthiness issue or I'm not enough, but it all comes from a different story. It all comes from different programming, you see? So there's no one size fits all approach. There's no, here's 12 bars, good luck, you should lose weight today. So the next question I wanna to talk to you about is how to embrace this new lifestyle change. When it comes to intuitive eating, there are 10 principles, and today I'm going to cover just four. Now if you're interested and like seriously interested in, in like becoming a healthier intuitive eater, I have a beautiful guide. It's called the seven days to becoming an intuitive eater. And if you are interested in getting your hands on this seven day step-by-step -step intuitive eating guide, I want you to just drop a message below that says guide. I will send you off the PDF. You can print it and you can start today. But there are 10 principles. And today I'm going to cover the first four. Okay, number one is you've got to learn to reject diet mentality. So I want you to think like, think about all the things that you see the word diet in, right? Throw out the diet cookbooks and the magazine articles that offers you those false hope of losing weight quickly, easily, and, and permanently. Yeah, it's going to allow, sometimes diets, right, they, they allow us to lose weight quickly, and you could say it's easy because you're so restrictive, right? You can't have that. You can't have this. You can't have that. Don't do that. Don't do this. In fact, just eat saltine crackers and tuna. How easy is that? Of course it was easy. But is it something that I could permanently do? Fuck no, right? Do I want to give up bread for the rest of my life? 
Hell no. Do I want to never eat, you know, like a piece of like chocolate cake ever again? No, thank you. Right? So I want you to get super frustrated and almost angry at diet culture because it promotes weight loss and the lies that have been led to you to feel like you're a failure every time you stop the diet right because that's the vicious trap is women start a diet they get some kind of results they feel like they can't do it forever so they stop they gain the weight back and then mentally we feel like shit right we're like oh I can't do anything I can't stick to anything oh I can't be consistent with this well no wonder you can't be cons consistent with this it's not meant to be consistent it's just meant to get you through the next 30 days so you can fit into your cute little cocktail dress so when you go on a cruise you don't feel so bloated Okay, like that's the goal of a diet. Quick results, not sustainable. So I want you to start to reject the diet mentality. Every time you hear the word diet, delete it out of your brain. Every time you see a magazine, get rid of it out of your house. Okay, start to reject the diet mentality. I want you to reframe what that actually looks like. Because back in the day, diet didn't mean, you know, restriction, starvation, etc. It meant what you eat from day to day, right? Your daily diet consists of proteins, carbs, fats, like a balanced plate, right? That's what it used to mean. It's definitely different now. So number one is I want you to reject diet mentality. Number two, I wanna really talk about how to honor your hunger. Keep your body biologically fed with adequate energy and carbs, right? Yes, ladies, I said carbs. Carbs are good for us. Carbs give us energy. Okay, so um, if you're not keeping yourself fed with adequate energy, proteins, carbs, and fats, it can trigger a primal drive to overeat. So once you reach the moment of excessive hunger, all intentions of moderation, conscious eating are like totally irrelevant, right? Has anyone been so freaking hungry that they're like cooking dinner with one hand and like putting their other hand in the chips? Yeah. Right? Like that used to be me. I'd be like cooking spaghetti while my, my hand is in the bag of Cool Ranch Doritos, like shoving my face. When I'm so incredibly hungry, I get so hangry, I'm willing to just about put anything in my mouth. So it's my job to eat several meals throughout the day to keep my metabolism burning, to keep me from feeling so freaking hungry I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Learning how to honor your body, this, this is like super almost like the very first thing that I teach my ladies, right, that I teach my clients, it sets the stage for building trust in yourself and food. So how do you start to honor your hunger? You start to check in with your body every single hour. I know it sounds tedious, but if you are skipping meals throughout the day and then at 4 o'clock when you get off work, you're like shoving every freaking thing in your mouth, guess what? You have to first start by putting food into your body. That's step one. Step two is it, say you're, you're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but you still find yourself super hungry. Okay, check in with yourself. I literally just told a client of mine, I said, set a timer for every hour of the, the working day. And I want you to ask yourself, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Oh, you are? Okay, then go eat a little something. Do not put your body in like guessing mode of like, is she going to feed me or is she not? Because when we do that, your body, your body goes into what, like, just the most easiest, simplest thing to comprehend is when you don't eat, your body goes into starvation mode, right? So it stores. So think of a bear. They eat all through, like, summer because they go into, like, they go into winter mode for winter because, like, food is scarce, right? So their body stores everything as fat, and then that way they can burn energy throughout the entire winter, we don't want to do that. I'd rather see you eat multiple meals throughout the day that are less healthier than for you to skip meals altogether. Okay, that's like a huge no-no. Number three, ladies, is to make peace with food. So, whew, call truce, right? Stop the food fight. Give yourself unconditional permission to eat. If you tell yourself that you can't or you shouldn't have a specific food, that can lead to intense feelings of deprivation that build into uncontrollable cravings and often binge eating. Now, I used to be a heavy binge eater, okay? And I would eat, 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 and then I would feel so guilty, and then I hated myself, and then I unbuttoned my pants, and I would go take a nap. I would go into food coma. 
But I want you to give yourself permission to eat food, you guys. Carbs are good, fats are good, right? Fats are like brain power for you, right? Healthy fats allow our joints to feel good. So anyone with joint pain, right? Like that's just one thing we could do to improve our joint pain is, is bring in some healthy fats. I'm not going to get into other things because I'll save that for a different uh, episode. But you guys get what I'm saying, right? There's no forbidden food. God created food on this earth for us to eat. We have to figure out what's good for our body. That's the difference, right? We have to figure out what's good for our body. I just um, ran a 21-day cleanse for my clients in August, and so many of the women, yeah, they lose the weight. That's like guaranteed, right? But what they love about it is that they figure out which foods actually make them feel bloated, which foods make them feel de-energized, which foods make them actually feel good, right? So food awareness is key. I want you to start to make peace with food. The fourth and final topic, the, the bullet point that I'm going to talk about is um, to challenge the food police. Okay, so this kind of goes with, with number three, um, but scream aloud no to thoughts in your head that declare that you're good for eating like minimal calories or bad for you ate a piece of chocolate cake. The food police monitor and unreasonable rules that diet culture has created, this like, ugh, just drives me crazy, right? So. Diet culture has put labels on food that says this is good, this is bad. I mean, at every, any given day, you could like read an article about how apples are bad. Like, really? Are you kidding me? So instead of looking at food as bad, I want you to start to get curious as to which foods are good for your body. Okay? So stop thinking food is bad. Stop thinking you don't know which food is good for your body. And this, this method of eating is how I've like lost the 100 pounds, uh, close to the 100 pounds, but this is how all of my clients, God, my clients have lost thousands if we conjoined all their weight loss. It'd be over 10,000 pounds of fat by never dieting, right? When I work with my clients, we work with nutrition in three stages. One, you get a custom meal plan that's tailored towards your goals, your nutrition, Number, like nutrition as like, oh, you know, you're gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, etc. right? It's not a one-size-fits-all plan. The second thing I teach them is the 10 principles of intuitive eating, which just like, oh my God, my, my girl Janika, right? She's a, she is a current client of mine, but she is the, now the master at food. When she used to struggle the most with food, she is now the master. She's like, I know when it's time for me to eat. I know how to stop eating when I'm not hungry anymore. I know, right, because she's, she's learned and embraced this new way of living. And she therefore, she feels so incredibly free, right? So this is a beautiful thing that you can start to embrace. And again, there's that free guide. Go, go ahead and drop in the word guide if you're like, ooh, now I'm intrigued. I've learned a little bit more about this. Um, all right, ladies, so quick heads up into next week. So the third Monday of every month, we talk about stress and the effects of stress in the body. And then I'm going to give you a beautiful guided meditation on how you can turn that chaos and that stress into calm, peace, and ease. So definitely join me. Mark your calendars right now for every Monday. A new episode of Between the Reps will go live right here. And uh, I'm so excited for you to be a part of this journey. If you found today's video very informative and fun <laughs> and brilliant, please follow me, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a hey, hey, hey on Instagram. Like, let me know what questions you have because on the fourth Friday, or the fourth Monday of every month, I answer all of your biggest questions, your biggest desires, like, Carissa, how do I do X? Carissa, how can I do X, right? Like all of these things, I'm gonna take the top five questions of the entire month that I get in my DMs or dropping down below, and I'm gonna go live teaching on those things. So feel free, you guys, invite your friends to this, this beautiful community, and let's get more women happy, healthy, and thriving in life. With that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I will see you soon. Bye.